Okay. A very good morning, good afternoon uh, to all who has uh, connected uh, here uh, uh, today with us. Uh, excellencies, distinguished partners, it's a pleasure to be with you today and for you to join us as we welcome you to the launch of this white paper on uh, safety and security in uh, tourism. I would like to start, uh, first of all, by expressing our sincere thanks and appreciation to the African Union Development Agency, AUDA NEPAD, as well as who's represented here by its CEO, Dr. Mayaki, and also the West African Economic and Monetary Union, UMOA, who's represented by the commissioner, Mr. Jacquet, who have both, both partners have uh, worked with us to realize this project. Uh, fostering resilience is one of the core priorities of the UNWTO Agenda for Africa, Tourism for Inclusive Growth. And as such, in order to respond to this key need, we have joined forces with the two agencies I mentioned, Auda Nepad and UEMOA, on the elaboration of this white paper on safety and security in tourism. This piece of work has come to fruition with the support of many colleagues in, uh, internally in UNWTO, international experts, they have joined us here today as well, and also specialized UN agencies such as UNODC and other key partners who's also joining us in this platform today. So as a sincere thank you and appreciation goes to also to our member states, uh, not only from the Africa region, but worldwide, and uh, namely Colombia, Kenya, Morocco, Mauritius, Mexico, the Philippines, Portugal, Senegal, Sri Lanka, and Tunisia. These 10 countries, they generously contributed to this white paper by sharing some of the best existing practices that uh, they have put in place in their respective countries to ensure the safety and security of the local and international tourists in their destinations. The tourism sector, as we have all witnessed, has been subjected to the effect of the biggest uh, pandemic in the history of tourism. But this crisis has further exposed the vulnerability of our sector to external shocks and also its interdependence on uh, other sectors. This will require collaborative efforts from all the stakeholders to build back better and to work to make the sector more resilient to future crises. We hope and also trust that the white paper will serve as a reference document to help address the current needs of our member states by regrouping existing and potential outstanding initiatives, concepts, methods, as well as essential operations and relevant responses to predictable safety and security threats worldwide. In addition, the white paper aims at giving both the public and the private sector tourism stakeholders the necessary tools designed to carry out their own safety and security policies adapted to their objectives, means, and, and constraints. So without further ado, we would like to start the program. Um, we will start, first of all, with some key messages from the three heads of the organizations that contributed to this white paper, with our Secretary General, of course, and then Auda Nepad, and followed by UMOA. And then we will screen a very short three minute video that will give a little bit more emphasis on the key messages of this publication. As well as uh, after this, we will have our lead expert, Mr. DJ Ranchon, with Mr. Paul Alley, who has joined us today at UNWTO to share with you a little bit more about this white paper, how it can be useful for member states to use going forward. So, Without uh, any delay, I just also want to um, inform for those listening in that we do have interpretation. Sorry, I should have said this at the beginning in French and uh, English. Uh, so you can follow the icon on your panel to change the, the language. So without delay, I invite our Secretary General for his uh, key remarks. Uh, Thank Mr. you. Thank you, Elsiago. Good morning uh, and good afternoon. Dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank all participants who made this very important and very, uh, very uh, useful uh, document. It's not only document guidelines, let, let's say, and 
during this uh, meeting, I think we will have a chance to talk about uh, details, how we can progress and how we can continue working on the thematic issues which are changing uh, every month, every year. This uh, project was planned to, first of all, today's meeting was planned presential. We wanted to make bigger and I'm sure that next year, starting from the next year, we will make several uh, different series of presential meetings in different uh, different regions. But the story started two years ago when we put in top priority of African uh, agenda uh, security issues. That time we were talking about internal securities and securities on borders, but without knowing that COVID will, uh, will happen. And um, now we have different kind of security uh, challenges and problems. Health security became a very important uh, part of the uh, tourism sector. And as we also, and I don't want now to talk about pandemic and about the problems and, problems and risks we, we, we all still have uh, around the world. Uh, and um, step by step and month by month situations were uh, changing. And we used to change the narrative and to change the content of this project. Finally, we have uh, this very important document, as I mentioned, many thanks to to uh, Nepad, especially to Dr. Ibrahim Asane Mayaki and uh, UEMOA, to Mamadou Serif Jakit. Uh, we meet virtually at the end of what has been another difficult year for tourism, but it has also been a year that has proven that only by working together we can overcome challenges and uh, embrace uh, opportunities. Uh, again, we started it from Africa, but I see many of our uh, friends from different parts of the world, from Europe. Uh, Sergio, Boas Dimitrios is there. I, I don't see all of you. We have minister from Myanmar. Very special uh, greetings from Madrid, Excellency. Uh, and again, uh, we see that this is not only for uh, created for, for Africa. This is very useful guideline for everyone. And I really kind, kindly want to ask and uh, encourage all countries and all member states to be part, to share this uh, better good experiences, the crisis management together. I want to remind all of you that uh, uh, harmonized protocols, where we are starting from the very beginning uh, when pandemic started, is still a problem. We need to be united and to create, and which is very difficult. We were working during all years to make one standard and harmonized protocol for everyone, but it's impossible to make without, uh, if we want to be uh, united and if we, all of us, we will not participate in this process. European Union has its own green uh, pass, but it's not useful for other countries and non-EU countries. So that's why we always encourage to everyone like European Union, also the rest of the world, to don't leave nobody behind uh, of this uh, this uh, process, because tourism is not only for one, two or three regions. I mean, and we still are working and I, I really want to use this kind of communication and this kind of meetings to encourage all governments to create and to continue conversations to have one harmonized protocol to don't confuse the tourists uh, when we are traveling. When we are traveling, we don't know what kind of processes we have to pass. And the traveling today became a headache for all of us. Uh, and at the end of the day, we have PCR, we have ticket, masks, and we are there. But there are so many confusions and so many difficulties and barriers that I don't think that these difficulties are needed. So this is uh, also uh, the foundation for winning back trust, a vital uh, ingredient to grow back better, restoring trust and confidence are critical to restart tourism. Uh, we mentioned many times, still many millions of people and businesses are at the risk. This will require uh, concrete actions. The white paper we mentioned and we are presenting now uh, about on safety, security, and tourism shows our commitment to working together to keep tourists safe. Uh, it also makes clear uh, that we are serious regarding our duty of 
care to keep tourism and workers safe. Uh, we were talking with Mr. Didier that this is the first maybe uh, document uh, worldwide, uh, not only from UN organizations talking about uh, security and uh, uh, security and uh, crisis. Crisis, I mean, for, for me, I mentioned and we mentioned many times, uh, this against uh, protocols and uh, standards are crisis management. If we can manage well crisis, it will be much easier. It, it will be very easy to travel tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, so uh, this white paper has two main objectives. The first one is to rebuild trust in the short term to get world moving again safely and uh, responsibly. This is very important for destinations where tourism is a lifeline and economic pillar. Many of them are in Africa and small island developing states. But as we mentioned, we, we see now bigger and we are going forward and uh, in the, uh, we want to use these guidelines for other regions and countries. And the second is the long term aim to build uh, greater res resilience into our sector, giving destinations the tools and the know how, how to deal with the crisis and uh, we're allowed to weather most uh, storms. I'm sure that next year now we have new stamp of uh, this uh, virus and things will, cha will change, but we have to follow this uh, reality and to adopt on this reality. That's why our uh, meetings and uh, we can even create a group of interesting people and uh, to follow and to have series of meetings or presential meetings or workshops or seminars uh, regarding uh, this uh, themes, I think so. So we must ensure that tourism remains a lifeline even in the most challenging of circumstances and uh, our uh, UNWTO is grateful, count on the partnership with African Union Development Agency. We did a lot of interesting and important projects last decade and last years with West African Economic and Monetary Union for this uh, important project. I also want to thank to experts who carried out and without them was impossible to make this uh, happen in these very hard times. And uh, we are going to follow them and to continue this series of uh, meetings. This has truly been an uh, international effort uh, bringing together countries from reg regions across the world towards a common goal. So I'm happy to see ministers and some representatives of the countries who contributed towards the publication from Africa, Asia, Europe and Americas joining us uh, today. And I uh, really look forward to seeing the suggestions of the this white paper put into action next year through workshops and online and offline uh, trainings. So uh, we just were talking now two or five minutes ago, we will plan our agenda for next year. And if you have any ideas, we are ready to listen to you. Uh, I always, always am supporting to have presidential meetings. Mm -hmm. Of course, this kind of meetings, it's, it's the first one, but uh, let's try and let's use the different uh, possibilities and opportunities we have and to meet somewhere and start these talks and conversations and use this uh, very important guideline to make travel and to restart tourism as fast as it will be possible. So thank you for your attention and I wish you a successful meeting for all of us. Thank, thank you, Mr. Secretary General, um, for your kind words as well. I will now like uh, to invite uh, Dr. Mayaki for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Elsia Grancourt. Uh, let me recognize uh, the Secretary General of UNWTO, Mr. Luli Kashvili, and uh, um, the President of, the, uh, of UMOA, uh, uh, my dear brother, uh, uh, Ablai Job, who I think is represented by by uh, his uh, commissioner. So we, it, we are very proud to be part of this uh, journey, uh, which has uh, been quite uh, dense, intense. And at the end of the journey, uh, it has been possible to produce this white paper on tourism and security and security, 
which is extremely concrete with pragmatic tools. Um, the Secretary General alluded to uh, uh, the, the methods, the approaches, the tools, the concepts. And uh, we consider that uh, they are extremely useful, not only for policymakers in the public sphere, but also for the, for the private sector. Uh, we know that Africa is facing its first recession in 25 years. Uh, we have been growing, not uh, sufficiently uh, in an inclusive manner, but we have been doing quite well. And we are faced with uh, um, the pandemic, which has hurt our economies. So we, we are in recession. And uh, the mechanism which are proposed in order to help us get out of this recession, the uh, debt services uh, suspension initiative, uh, the special drawing rights of the IMF, we know are not going to be sufficient. So we need to reignite our capacity to mobilize domestic resources. And this is where tourism comes as a critical sector because uh, a well-managed tourism sector in an horizontal manner can help to really uh, mobilize uh, sufficient domestic resources. So this pandemic is a, is a tragedy, but at the same time, it is an opportunity. And uh, when you were referring to crisis management, uh, Mr. Secretary General, it's really the, the, the Chinese ideogram for crisis is danger and opportunity. So let's take the opportunity angle. And uh, I want to really congratulate uh, UNWTO for its leadership in revitalizing uh, the thinking about tourism, but also uh, revitalizing uh, its cooperation with member states, uh, especially in Africa, because uh, it's a continent to which, uh, which I know, uh, uh, at least, and uh, revitalizing um, concrete tools that can help promote the tourism sector. And uh, you, your legacy, Mr. Secretary General, uh, will be extremely uh, heavy, uh, positively in that, in that sense. So we, we thank you for the leadership that you have, that you, you have shown. So to recovery, domestic resources focus on tourism. We know, I will not get to the numbers, but we know what the numbers are in terms of micro, small, and medium enterprises which are present in the sector, in terms of employment, in terms of contribution uh, to GDP. And by uh, fostering uh, the partnership with uh, UMOA, uh, um, we are showing also that uh, on a specific region, uh, there can be a specific analysis of the multidimensional crisis that region is facing, uh, uh, terrorism, but also uh, health system issues, uh, food systems issues. So this paper goes beyond tourism because it frames uh, um, tools that can help think about security and how to manage the security issues beyond just tourism. Uh, and I think uh, quite a good number of uh, uh, policy experts and uh, policy makers in other domains from food system to health system will inspire themselves of, uh, of this paper. Uh, uh, finally, uh, this is a demonstration, this paper is a demonstration of an efficient, intelligent partnership. Uh, we uh, targeted an issue, we got together, and uh, with the support of experts in that domain, we produced, as you said, Secretary General, which is what can be considered as a, as a landmark uh, uh, paper, uh, unique in uh, uh, the global scene of publications that we see uh, left and right. Unique in the sense that uh, we will use it uh, in order to disseminate uh, uh, the right approaches uh, to the sound policies that need to be that need to be developed. So, um, resilience on the one hand, uh, crisis management on the other, but in the core of uh, 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 this paper is a reflection on how partnership can help uh, uh, solve obstacles 
and produce uh, useful tools. So I'm very happy uh, and very proud that the uh, African Union Development Agency has been part of this process. Uh, we will continue our partnerships with UNWTO, with UOMOA, and disseminate in the other regions of the continent all the uh, positive uh, instruments that have been mentioned. And let me also thank the, uh, the experts who have worked very hard. Uh, they, I'm sure that uh, their presentation will be extremely uh, uh, useful, and we are looking forward to the discussions that will be uh, that will be developed. So um, uh, thank you very much, and I wish very fruitful discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mayaki. And uh, allow me again to recognize the support that your agency gave us uh, in the realization of this project, and also the support of the president, Mr. Abdullah Job, as you mentioned, from UEMOA, who supported us with this, and now will be represented by his commissioner for development of um, uh, humanitarian human development uh, at the UEMOA. Mr. Jacquet, you have the floor. Mr. Jacquet, kindly, uh, il faut activer votre micro, s'il vous plaît. Please switch your microphone on, sir. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Vous can you hear me? Oui, yes, we can hear you. Merci, Thank you, madame. In the name of Mr. Abdullah, Abdullah Diop, who is unable to be present, I would like to represent the UEMOA Commission in this very important event. And I will now make my speech. Secretary General of the UNWTO. Chief Executive Officer of the AUDA, NEPAD. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen from the diplomatic services, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to convey the apologies from Mr. Abdullah Diop, the president of the UEMOA Commission. He is unable to attend today and has asked me to convey his congratulations to the Secretary General for his re-election at the head of the UNWTO. In addition, he greets the distinguished guests present in this ceremony. The UEMOA Commission is honored to be a partner in the publication of this white paper on safety and security in tourism, a key factor in development of a tourism industry. The official launch is happening in the next few days. With the launch of this white paper, we intend to ensure the safety and security of tourism professionals and tourists, given the various contexts in our countries. The safety and security context that the world is experiencing at the moment is critical and worrying. It is marked by terrorism and the health crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. It is affecting all of us. Africa is not spared by these scourges that have illustrated the vulnerability of the tourism sector from these invisible scourges which are having huge economic crises and consequences. I would like to highlight I would like to talk now about the crisis of the Sahel, as it is known. 
The Sahel region is well known by tourism agencies, but these days has been more or less abandoned. This is one of many examples, and given in light of these dramas, we cannot remain immobile. And that's why this white paper led by the UNWTO and available to anyone working in the tourism sector, focusing on safety and security in tourism, is something that we at the UEMOA Commission were glad to be part of. Mr. Secretary General of the UNWTO, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, there are no activities without risk. And it's our ability to anticipate and manage these risks that can help us to reduce the often disastrous consequences that they engender. The white paper, which is currently being launched, is a very pertinent response and a very timely response. And we need to keep in mind that the publication and dissemination of this white paper is just one step in the process. We need to go much further. It will be useful to accompany this initiative with constant monitoring, monitoring by public authorities at different levels, whether local, national or regional, and also by the private sector who are essential links in the chain of all of those responsible for tourism given the growing risks affecting our tourism activities we have to organize platforms for discussion and dialogue between the various participants in the tourism sector and particularly with those in charge of security and safety in order to calm the fears of tourists. It's only if we bring these conditions together that this initial step will gain real meaning because it will allow us to work on ensuring safer and more reassuring conditions for professionals and for tourists. It's a very important economic sector for our countries and for our people. The UEMOA Commission, in line with its mission, and working with partners such as the UNWTO will play its role. And we will work with its member states to see how this useful tool can be implemented. That means that this initiative will allow us to strengthen and extend our efforts in terms of cooperation to ensure a better future for tourism activi activities in the eight member states of the UEMOA. I would like to conclude by transmitting the congratulations of the UEMOA Commission to the UNWTO for having led this project to fruition. I would particularly like to acknowledge the very professional work of those who have written this white paper and which has given us the chance to make a decisive 
to make decisive progress in our approach to security and safety in the tourism industry. This is an important pillar of our economy and very important for humanity. And that is how I will conclude my words today in the name of the president of the UEMOA Commission, Mr. Abdullahi Diop. I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to listen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you. All um, uh, the presenters, uh, Secretary General, Mr. Mayaki and Mr. Jakit uh, for your presentations this morning. And uh, just to mark the launch, because we cannot be in presential, we will screen a, a short three minute video that will really emphasize the key points uh, of this uh, white paper. And then we can move to the informative session by our, by our experts and also allow from, for some questions from the floor that you may have for those who's following. So if we can have the short video, please. Um, I would just like also to reiterate that uh, the white paper comes in three volumes. 
we obviously started with um, the, the French version. Uh, in this case, uh, we, my colleague now is putting the links in the chat for those of you who want to already access the three volumes of this white paper. And uh, within uh, the next month or so, we will have the English version that we will then also share with all our, our partners and members. So um, we've come again, as I mentioned, at the end of the first part of the session. So now I will invite uh, our two experts who will join us here today, Mr. Didier Monchon and Mr. Paul Allais, who will uh, walk through what are the, the key uh, messages uh, and uh, the use of this white paper going forward to all the members. But of course, we want to make it very interactive. I believe Didier will also invite some of you who has contributed to this paper to share your experience. And maybe at the end, we can take some questions that you may have before we wrap up the session. So over to you, Didier. Merci beaucoup, uh, Elisha. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to you all. And maybe it's going to be helpful for everyone. Je pense que ça peut être très utile pour tout le monde de, de rentrer dans le détail de, de ce travail. Uh, I think it would be very interesting to get into the detail of this work and, and talk about what the white paper is actually about and, and how it has been drawn up. What I suggest then is, is for me to answer five or six questions uh, that I think uh, will allow all of you to better understand the approach that has been taken when uh, this um, uh, paper has been developed. First of all, uh, why? Uh, what, what has been acknowledged here? What has been recognized? Uh, why has UNWTO wanted, decided to take on this initiative? Why did it decide to create this white paper? Uh, the, the first point there is that three organizations uh, have uh, acknowledged uh, uh, this, uh, as well as uh, member states and professional organizations, because they all realized that there was a huge challenge that has to be faced uh, because of the pandemic and also because of a number of different crises uh, that the tourism sector has had to uh, deal with uh, recently. So because of that, understanding that uh, acknowledgement, uh, uh, there was also a need uh, to professionalize the response. The, the idea was to deal with all of the problems of uh, safety that had uh, arisen through the challenges and the crisis, uh, but to make sure that, that the response would be uh, beneficial for pro professionals in the tourism sector as well as tourists. So as I said, three organizations uh, uh, recognize this fact and uh, they joined together to launch this initiative, but as you can probably understand, that necessary professionalization of the sector really does require that the sector itself uh, uh, takes ownership of this white paper. So today, the very first uh, response to that question, it's an answer to that question, why a white paper? It, well, that is the answer because of this acknowledgement that, that there was an urgent need for change and for professionalization of all of the players in the sector. So in the face of that challenge, and uh, this is something, and let me repeat that, that has never been uh, taken on by any organization uh, with this scope, we decided, therefore, to propose a classic academic approach. Uh, you can see that, particularly in volume one of this white paper, the definition of, of a number of terms used in the white paper, the vocabulary, uh, a terminology, uh, a number of uh, concepts uh, that were accepted. We talk about crisis and uh, management uh, of the crisis, uh, resilience. Uh, this academic approach is, of course, necessary for any ambitious uh, project like this. You first and foremost have to establish the terminology and the concepts to be used. We, we then supplemented that uh, academic approach uh, with experience uh, in the field. You probably have seen uh, that that, uh, that experience is the content of 
the volume two. Those experiences were part of the know-how that exists in the field, good practices too. Uh, this came out of discussions uh, uh, and meetings and perhaps a, a larger uh, discussion that uh, came from different geographies in the world with regard to the challenges, the threats and the risks uh, that the sector is facing. So that experience in the field is extremely important because for the very first time, there was a sharing of these experiences, a very willing sharing of it with the organizations that, that might perhaps need to come up with a response. You will find in uh, the, the second uh, volume, uh, this compilation, this uh, compiling rather of uh, solutions that have been put together. And UNWTO here is, is making a, a contribution here. It's, it's capabilities there. Uh, to work with, to company, to support the different uh, member states and the professionals in the implementation of their responsibilities and their tasks. So the, volume two of the white paper, once again, is uh, a volume that uh, all of the stakeholders have taken ownership of. Uh, it, it contains uh, technical data sheets, sheets uh, these fact sheets and initiatives. Uh, it's, it's a very um, user-friendly uh, approach, I believe. Uh, you'll find it very useful as a guidebook, uh, a manual compiling those good practices. And we do believe that different partners and member states will be able to use this and it will also provide food for thought for everyone. It will uh, trigger that food for thought. And that takes me to my third point, the third question. I was just explaining how we had put together the white paper. And once again, as we move to the volume three, it was something that was done by rallying all of the, the players, the crises, uh, the risks uh, and the challenges uh, have all uh, been out there for a long time. Tourism sector professionals and practitioners have had to deal with a number of different challenges for a while. And we called on a number of member states, and of course, I would be very happy to, to give the floor to a number of them present this morning. Uh, they, they were asked to give us their experience and to, to tell us uh, that experience so that we could uh, use it uh, as input for our white paper. I, I don't know who exactly is connected today. Sergio Guerrero, I believe, from Portugal. For instance, we could give give them the the floor straight away. We could start off with Portugal, and then Tunisia. Perhaps it, we could get you to just give us a couple of comments and tell us quickly uh, what you thought about this initiative and this approach, and to what extent Portugal has made a contribution to this white paper. How have you participated, Sergio? You have the floor. Thank you, Didier, for. for giving me the, the, the floor. Uh, actually, I have to move to, to, move to a, another meeting in a, in a few minutes. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to, to congratulate uh, UNOTO and the partners for, for working on, 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 this, uh, on, on this project. I think it's very, very important initiative, very timely initiative. I think uh, this is a very important topic in, in, in everyone's agenda, and especially for policymakers. And uh, uh, safety has been always part of our strategies as, as destinations, but now with COVID-19, I think we, take, we, we took this to, to, to another level. As, as, as I was saying, safety is, is a key element for, for destination attractiveness. It's, it's something that typically we don't promote in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the first row of our initiatives of promotion of, of destinations, but it's definitely a very important area of work uh, for, for policymakers required from our point of view uh, a, a whole of government approach a straight cooperation between uh, several ministries putting tourism at the core of of of, of their uh, of their 
priorities, and I think that's very, very important. Um, I, I'm, I actually, I was very happy to to have participated within this uh, within this um, this this report, and also also learning from from it. Um, from from our side, we've basically highlighted three main contributions on on this. The first one was was the the clean the clean and safe um, initiative that we we've launched throughout the the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And basically we were the first ones to jump in and to create a safe and, and safe level to assure a safety to the, 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 the tourists that visit Portugal as a destination, but at the same time uh, to, uh, to protect the tourism workforce that delivers an excellent service within our destination. So making sure that everyone was available. We did this the closely connected with the Ministry of Health though having um, rules and criteria for each one of the segments of the industry uh, with, spe with specific training for the employees and at the same time with an online platform giving tourists the possibility of informing them themselves where they could, they, could they get uh, clean and safe uh, establishments and services and at the same time giving them the possibility of giving feedback on the, on the level of security that um, that was delivered. Just to give you an idea, we have uh, more than 23,000 uh, companies that subscribe and have the, the, the clean and safe stamp today, more than a thousand uh, audits uh, to verify the, 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 if the criteria are, are, are being met. So an excellent initiative and I think will, will, will come for the future even without COVID, which we believe that uh, should be uh, uh, well, we're on, on, on a track to, to deal with that. The second one is, I, I would say, a, a good practice that we've been taking for, for a long, long time, which is having dedicated police for tourists uh, in, in the most uh, um, important destinations of the country. And here is basically having the same services that a, a police has to, uh, to, to deliver, but with, uh, with the with the with the languages, with all the care that tourists deliver with, within this place, it's. I think we all need police, but in in uh, when you're on holidays, everything is 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 more complicated. And the last but not the least, the use of, of mobile data to monitor um, tourism flows at destination level. I think it's something that um, we, we when we think about security, we we most of the time think about crisis management. But we believe that we have to take uh, the, the, the opposite approach, which is start planning and using data for planning and avoiding to have a crisis management issue. So basically, um, and that's one project that we've been working with with our municipalities. It's an ongoing project, but uh, we believe that data also can be uh, an enabler of this. So, well, all from my side, thank you very much once again for, for, uh, for inviting us to share our experience. More than glad to cooperate in the, in the future with uh, with you and with you and uh, all the experts around. Um, it's it's has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, merci Thank beaucoup. you very much. Thank you very much, Sergio. They they're very nice words to hear. They're very useful as well. So that if you look in the third tome. You'll see the Portuguese example, you'll see the interview with Sergio Guerrero, and I'm convinced that this will really be very useful for many partners to use the experience of Portugal and the way that they've approached management of the pandemic using the data from tourists and travelers. And it's an example, once again, which could be replicated elsewhere. And I think that Portugal and Sergio Guerrero in particular would be very willing to help in this collective approach that we've adopted here. So this is to share these best practices and the best solutions that they've found. Thank you very much once again, Sergio. Now I'd like to ask Muna, Muna Glis from Tunisia. She also contributed to the white paper. Have we got Muna online? Hello, Muna. Hello. Th yes, we can hear you. Thank you for being with us today. Could we ask you to speak now and tell us about your participation? Yes, of course. I'm delighted 
to be part of this online meeting. I hope that the next one we'll be able to organize it in person. I'd like to congratulate the UNWTO. Um, I'd like to congratulate Zorab Pololishkashvili for being re-elected at the head of the UNWTO. So first of all, let me mention the UNWTO and the partners and congratulate them for the work that they've done. I've been looking through the white paper and it's a very important document. It sheds light on best practices, on experiences from other countries, and this will help us to develop our own strategies for safety and security, which be have become a key element. And we also provided our experience and this concept of self security. So this is to encourage players in the tourism sector to play an active role in the security situation and to work in partnership with the police, with private security forms to, uh, to show vigilance and to adopt best practices. This is an action that has been led by colleagues within the tourism ministry. And they're in charge of this program in collaboration with the minister. I'm afraid they weren't able to join us for the meeting today, but they wanted us to send their greetings. In addition, the Tunisian government has drawn up a list of criteria related to this idea of auto security and tourism professionals have to respect these rules in order to be accredited. So if a tourism company wishes to receive tourist, um, tourists, then they are required to respect a number of criteria. These criteria relate to security and safety. And these criteria are monitored by experts from the National Tourism Office. And the implementation of these standards has been accompanied by an awareness raising campaign and training organized by the Ministry of Tourism for professionals in tourism in Tunisia. And the Tunisia's National Tourism Office, working with the Ministry of the Interior, helps to manage crises and is on alert 24 hours a day in order to help the tourism sector. That's part another part of our contribution. And so you can read about Tunisia uh, we're number 10 in the list of case studies in volume three. Thank you. Thank you very much, Muna. That's a very useful contribution. Once again, to really demonstrate the practical operational side of the um, white paper, if you look at page 42 of the third volume, you'll see the interview with Muna and Karim Belhusina. They were extremely enriching and we wanted to share those with you. And I truly believe that the big UNWTO community will be delighted to answer questions, work with Muna, and share these best practices. Zineb, should I speak to somebody from Morocco or Senegal and ask them to take part? Mr. Rassan El Shirik, if you're with us, would you please be willing to say, to talk to us briefly about your participation in the uh, white paper? Your, your interview is uh, on page 20 of volume three. 
Hello, everybody. And thank you very much for the invitation. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You've given me the floor at a very important time for me. I'm not sure if there's representatives of the Ministry of Tourism that are in the meeting as well. Are there any of my colleagues in the meeting? Uh, no, it would appear not. No, it would appear not. There's just you, sir. But, okay. I can briefly talk about Morocco's contribution to the white paper. So, we organized a meeting with the ministry in March, and we talked about the security situation at the regional and national level, uh, particularly focused on the pandemic and its consequences on travel. Because it's had a severe impact on the sector. And so the Moroccan government has focused on the safety and security of tourists in Morocco. We've also recently adopted a new law which lists all the measures taken to control the pandemic. Now, these are quite general measures, but then there's also measures affecting tourists in historic areas. So, we're, we were, this is working with the state security services. We have we also have the local authorities who have a role to play in tourism policies because we have joint commissions organized that consist of the Wali, who's the local prefect, and other dignitaries, and they raise awareness about tourism issues to encourage tourism uh, um, players to be aware of the security issues. I'm finding it difficult to express the idea that I want to express. This helps to contribute to safety for tourists in Morocco. Now, I am also going to ask my colleagues to come and join the meeting because maybe they have more comments to make with regards to the interview that's in the white paper. Thank you. Thank you. We've had a little bit of difficulty to hear you. But once again, we, if you look at page 20 in the third volume of the white paper, you can see the interview that we had with you. And it was a very fruitful discussion. Uh, Asia, uh, not to forget Africa, but just to to enlarge our our scope of of uh, uh, witness, and uh, and I would like maybe to to ask to Dr. Prasad Jayasuriya from uh, Sri Lanka, 
to uh, to say a word. Uh, we have been uh, very very honored to uh, have a, a, a short interview with him uh, about the tracking of uh, uh, the tourists that uh, Sri Lanka put in place uh, during the, the, the pandemic. And I, I am sure that uh, it can be very interesting to, 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 to share uh, some words with, uh, with uh, Dr. Prasad. Uh, are you here, sir? Yes, yes, I'm there. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Can you hear me? You have me? the floor. Yes, great. You have the floor. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So, uh, just to share, when when the pandemic hit the shores of Sri Lanka, I think the biggest challenge for us was to find out the tourists who were in different parts of the island. So, when we started our discussions with uh, the health authorities on how we can start tourism under the pandemic situations, one key consideration was to ensure how we can track the tourists uh, when they are inside the country, because health authorities were absolutely uh, serious about uh, holding the tourism uh, organization, Sri Lanka Tourism, holding responsibility of every international traveler who is arriving in the country. So with that intention, we during the pandemic, in the first few weeks of the lock, initial lockdown, we worked with all the relevant organizations under the guidance of health ministry, as well as representatives of the World Health Organization, uh, to understand what are the things that we need to implement when we are trying to uh, continue tourism under the pandemic conditions. So in that, as I said, one key requirement was to ensure that we have clear details of every traveler inside the country. So what we uh, did was like as uh, some of uh, our friends shared earlier, we also developed a very comprehensive guidelines covering every aspect of a tourist uh, covering his entire journey within the country right from the arrival at the airport until he departs from the airport but on top of that uh, we also introduce a very uh, uh, strict audit process and we appointed the internationally reputed uh, audit firms kpmg and eny to conduct independent audits for us based on the guidelines that we have put in place for tourists and we introduced what we call the bio bubble concept. I think it's one of the uh, key initiatives taken by Sri Lanka tourism. We are, I think it's the first in the region itself, where we allowed the tourists, even before vaccination started to come into the country, of course, spend uh, the first 14 days within the bio bubble in certified level one hotels and we gave them the entire freedom to use all facilities within the hotel as well as to move within the level one certified hotels where we said it's more the tourist was actually moving within the bubble and within that bubble we allowed them to visit certain certified safe and secure certified uh, tourist attractions so the entire tourist movement was tracked and also we introduced a certificate for all these certified service providers with a unique QR code. So anybody, whether it's a tourist or whether anybody who is visiting the facility can easily scan that QR code and get all the details of the service provider. And in case if they are not satisfied in any of the practices that the certified service provider is practicing in reality, they can quickly scan the QR code and report it back to the regulatory body, which is Sri Lanka Tourism, with uh, photo evidence or with the written uh, complaint, where we had an entirely a dedicated team who would quickly attend to the any reported violations. And if it is true, we were very uh, actively taking action against the relevant service provider in order to ensure that it's not only a simple certification process, but a certification which gives warranty and guarantee to the visitor that it's act actually safe for them to visit the country and stay within the bubble. And when they were within the bubble, uh, we were able to track the movement and identify the movement. And as a part of that, oh, we also introduced uh, a very uh, comprehensive local insurance cover for COVID-19 because what we realized was not every traveler 
has a of course they may come with a health insurance but every health insurance does not cover the covid conditions so for just 12 us dollars we gave every traveler a 50000 us dollar coverage so that in case in the worst case scenario if somebody is tested positive when he's on tour uh, the person there was no need for him to worry with the insurance mandatory insurance cover which costs only 12 dollars the relevant hotel and Sri Lanka tourism will take care of uh, his health and give them the best care under the best hospitals in the country so that uh, even if somebody has to face the worst case scenario of testing positive, still uh, he was uh, taken care of. So I think we had only about 0.5% uh, tested positive during the entire period up to now but everybody was taken care of under best health conditions so that uh, we not only had a certification process in place, we had actually uh, systems in place to ensure that that is actually practiced to the highest level. So I think that was a very interesting learning for all of us. And uh, uh, we are still practicing that, of course, with some of the guidelines relaxed by now with the vaccination process in place where we actually see about 90% of our arrivals are fully vaccinated guests and also as a country we have uh, more than 75% uh, population already fully vaccinated so with that health authorities have relaxed most of the guidelines but still uh, we uh, we see the value of the safe and secure certification process because the hotels still want to get the certification the people who have not obtained the certification they want to get the certification because now that has become not only a warranty for the international tourists to come and stay in a safe and secure hotel, but also it, it has become a marketing tool for the hoteliers to differentiate themselves. So I think that tells the story of the success of the program that we have implemented. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. This, this is a very, very uh, uh, interesting experience and uh, not only an experience, it's something that works uh, today in Sri Lanka. And uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone's going to be very much interested by your interview on page 39 in uh, uh, the, the book three of, uh, of the, the white paper. Uh, and uh, again, th this is a proof of uh, the way we deal with uh, uh, um, the, 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 the elaboration of this uh, white paper, in fact, we share. We share experience. We share the, the good practice of everyone. And, uh, and we put it on, on the table. Everyone can be uh, uh, interesting to use it, to adapt it, to uh, uh, de se l'approprier. Et, et à la fin de, 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 de la journée, d'utiliser, de, de transformer son organisation uh, to partir... transform the organization based on the experiences of Sri Lanka. So, we took a sharing approach. And what I think that we could do now is talk about how we answered the questions that we decided we wanted to answer. So we could move to our PowerPoint presentation now. And the third question was, who is this white paper for? Now, the UNWTO's approach is very inclusive. It's as open-minded as possible. And the idea is to mobilize both the public and the private sector. Any professionals in the tourism, this can be ministries, security, tourism, artisan, uh, justice, trade, etc., local authorities, professional organizations should find answers to some of the questions that they are asking themselves in the first volume. The same applies to the private sector. I'm thinking about hotel chains, restaurants, travel agencies, various platforms. Everybody should be able to feed on the experiences in the white paper. Now, the white paper is not, it is, is open-ended. The discussions and the sharing of information will allow us to feed into it, but in the three 
volumes, there are already quite a substantial number of best practices and concepts that you can use in your activities. The interpreter apologizes, but there is no sound coming from the main meeting at the moment. I cannot hear what Didier is saying. I apologize, Didier needs to put his microphone on, I believe, I'm not sure, I think. We will resume interpreting when the sound Resumes. I apologize for the inconvenience. Here we go. So this is an approach that is encouraging professionalization of tourism professionals. And this leads me to my fifth point, which is how can we use this white paper? This I, I'm checking now that Elsia and Jaime agree with what I'm about to say now, but I think that the white paper will be sent to all member states, to all partners, and will be as widely um, distributed as possible. As possible, it will be accessible from the various websites of the organization, and it, in the in the virtual library. So accessible to all members. That's the first step. The second step is to take ownership of the document and to apply it in local policies, local practices, that will help to develop specific policies to take security and safety into account in the various countries, the various hotel chains, the various tourism sites, and then adapt it to the local context which will mean really taking ownership of it from the very beginning. But the UNWTO would like to receive feedback. So how it's been adapted in various countries should be, um, should be reported on to the, the organization so that the UNWTO can go further in any subsequent versions of the white paper and so that the document can continue to develop. And now my final point, the support that the UNWTO is planning to put in place. And I say put, planning to put in place because the question that's being asked of member states and of partners is to think about this initiative and, answer, and say whether or not it corresponds to everybody's expectations, yes or no. If it does, brilliant. If it doesn't, then the organization would put in place a series of training courses that would be made available to the various members and partners to help them put in place the policies in the white paper. We've had experience with online training and they've been a great success with many people signing up 
uh, many partners who wanted to take part in these training courses with my friend Louis Bernard and the team at Chrysotech within the UMWTO, we have been able to develop these training courses and offer them to everybody over the internet in French and in English. So maybe we should reinitialize this program for 2022 in a virtual format to start with. And maybe you can help us to establish the, the, the time frame for these, the, the frequency, maybe they could be once or twice a month or once every quarter or however, you could let us know how often you would like them. And then once we're free to travel again, maybe we could create regional workshops. And if a certain number of countries and member states are interested in hosting reach workshops, workshops based on the model of what we've done in the past in Senegal, for example, for professionals, I think once again, the UNWTO would be interested in examining the feasibility of this, the logistics of this, but the strategic intention is there. And then let's be more ambitious. Let's be, let's, let's really take this to its, to its limits. I was talking about this with the Secretary General earlier. I think that as we raise awareness and we develop this new security and safety policy, which now has to really be taken ownership of by the partners, then maybe we could present this work before other bodies such as the European Commission or the foreign ministries or tourism ministries of um, some of the countries or professional organizations, big hotel chains, maybe hotel training schools. So anyone who expresses an interest in working with us on the dissemination of this white paper, then we would look on this very uh, intently and going beyond the um, regional department for Africa, which is behind this initial um, effort, maybe in other regions and in other bodies, we could continue to spread the word and maybe even create some sort of a label or a certification which um, would um, emphasize these efforts that are being made. And I don't want to take any more of your time. I think there may be questions from the room or online. And I'm told that Senegal would like to take the floor. They've been a good, a great, they've paid, a, they gave a great contribution to the white paper. Mr. Philippe Ba is here. Yes, yes, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. I'd like to say hello to everybody. Greetings. In the name of the Minister of Tourism in Senegal, Mr. Jeloba the director of the Tourism Commission. We're delighted to be here at this event, and we'd also like to congratulate the Executive Secretary for his re-election. And we're delighted that this event has been organized, and we hope that this pandemic will soon subside and allow us to meet in person because it would be very useful for us to actually meet in person. I understand that the UNWTO is planning to organize regional workshops in, in due course, and we think it's an excellent idea here in Senegal. We need, to, we need to work hand in hand to promote tourism as a whole, so that companies and society can appropriate tourism. Tourism is essential for the economic development of our countries, and that's why 
Senegal, like other countries, congratulates the UNWTO and also wishes to see the pandemic subside as quickly as possible. This is what I wanted to say on behalf of the ministry from Senegal and the directors. We work hand in hand with the UNWTO and we congratulate you for your efforts and the enthusiasm of the team in order to promote tourism. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, let me take you to uh, volume three again. Uh, I think it's page 36. Uh, you will find the experience uh, of uh, Senegal, particularly with, with regard to, to the, the policies there in the first initiative and in especially safety uh, in transport. Uh, this is obviously an example that can be followed, an excellent example for you. Uh, it's great. Thank you very much. Uh, you, I'm sure you'll all be very interested to find more about that example of Senegal in the white paper. Thank you to Philippe again. I believe there are some other questions uh, for us. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm sure you're all very interested to ask us about this initiative. Who shall I give the floor to? Would anyone like to take the floor? This is your time. This is your moment. Uh, I, I believe we still have uh, uh, a few minutes, five to ten minutes left. Uh, if you would like to uh, say something, yes, uh, talk to, to Elsia or Jaime or anyone else on the team. So everything was clear. Uh, I, uh, everyone, uh, I think, uh, is uh, is very patiently uh, waiting to uh, work uh, on this uh, and to do the follow-up on the white paper. Elsie, perhaps you'd like to carry on. Yes, I, 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 I'm being told uh, that someone from Mecca was would like to take the floor. Is, is it uh, Madame Drapo? Yes, yes, good morning. Yes, you can uh, go ahead. Yes, we can hear you. I did th think uh, that uh, the somebody else was going to take the floor there before myself. I don't know what thoughts are from from the director for Africa. No, 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 she will she will wait for you to finish. You have the floor, madam. Thank you very much. I also will, on behalf of ECOWAS's commission, like to congratulate uh, the Secretary General for his re-election to uh, the office. Uh, it's uh, extremely important for our industry and for all of us in all the regions in the world. I would also like to congratulate you and WTO for this initiative to produce the white paper. I, I do believe that it is a, a good uh, launch pad. I believe that half of our members, uh, at least in it was, uh, have been facing uh, safety and security problems for a number of years in tourism and I uh, I believe that uh, there is a holistic approach that is taken here but I particularly wanted to focus on the second part of the of the white paper and I what I did appreciate was the very detailed in content I, I see that you have fully taken into account every single angle and facet of the uh, safety and security crisis that we are facing. So my congratulations to the team, uh, wealth of experience there, it's all very detailed. And then I would also say that uh, we get uh, a great uh, overview of the threats and risks uh, for the tourism sector with regard to safety and security. This has a particular impact on the African destinations. And if I, I think particularly because those African destinations that have been uh, the target of terrorist attacks, when you read though, the, the list of threats we are facing, then I think we have to be careful uh, about looking at the severity of the case, uh, but it seems that there is this stigma there, but uh, we have to understand that there are just a couple uh, of uh, attacks in our region. 
So I understand that that it's an it's an excellent overview, but there are some countries that are, are facing a highest level of security uh, and risk there, and there's a lot of work that has to be done with regard to our policies to be able to get through this crisis. This is an initiative that will allow African destination, particularly West African destination, to reposition themselves today uh, to uh, be able to face uh, the current circumstances. And then uh, I'm thinking to you, uh, uh, as uh, someone who has responsibility for, for programs, that uh, I someone said earlier, I believe, that there is also follow-up phase of in the white, for this white paper, what will come next? We here in ECOWAS are very, very keen to work with your, with your teams uh, uh, that will work uh, with the white paper to put together that um, a, a manual of procedures, uh, perhaps that's the title you will give it, or some sort of guide, guidelines for us uh, to be able to uh, take uh, uh, urgent measures to deal with uh, this crisis. Uh, I understand that there should also be a strategic perspective to it, because very often all of everything in the in the tourism system, um, all of the professionals involved, the, the practitioners working there are perhaps not necessarily working on the post-crisis phase. Quite often, as I said, we're not looking at it from a, a short-term, medium or long-term perspective or strategy. And, and it's, it, it's quite, it's a pity there because we also have to deal with the, the safety and security events themselves. Just for instance, uh, uh, a, 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 a bomb attack, for instance, that, that happens. We know, uh, of course, that 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 we should we should have uh, the practitioners involved in the tourism sector but only in that particular uh, area of the destination but the the stakeholders should also be able to carry on with activities i i i understand that here the UNWTO can act there as a, a sort of spokesperson for us because the tourism dimension, I believe, should be a dimension that should be appreciated much more. Uh, uh, it, ha it has much more importance strategically. So let me end by congratulating and commending all everyone who has uh, made a contribution to this white paper. I would imagine that it's been uh, hard to be able to get to all of these uh, ex experiences and get the, uh, the input from people uh, who have gone through crisis, so we do understand that uh, even though some of us are involved in strategic development at a regional level of tourism, I would say that it's important to also look at those destinations uh, that are on borders. Accessibility sometimes can be extremely difficult uh, there, so I would commend you or those of you who have given us uh, those uh, um, uh, experiences, first-hand experiences from the field. I think a white paper like this, this will somehow de debunk uh, the, the 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 myths about safety and security uh, in our sector, and really uh, get to grips with the problems and put us in a position to be able to act. Uh, uh, there, there is still something that can be done. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I really do commend the work that you've done, and our. Uh, Commission in ECOWAS will, of course, work together with you and WTO if there are some uh, workshop shops uh, when we're dealing with the post-crisis effect. Uh, we stand ready to help you develop further strategy to have more continuity as you move forward with the white paper. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we actually are the ones who should thank you, uh, Madame Drap, uh, no, Dravo, uh, uh, for your for your very clear comments there, for being so uh, frank with us. Yes, you, you have uh, mentioned a lot of cases and you've given us, of course, uh, your thanks. But above all, I think you have been able to identify the philosophy uh, underpinning this work 
You, you are absolutely right. Uh, we are debunking the myth of the safety and security problem. That is part uh, of the work we're doing. That is a dimension that we have uh, looked at, that is our standpoint that we have taken. We want to explain to all of the tourism sector practitioners uh, that uh, safety or security problems do, do not actually mean uh, uh, the, the death of tourism activities. There will be opportunities from crisis as well. There, there, there will always be somebody uh, uh, out there who will actually uh, uh, pick up uh, on pick on on uh, the innocent people or tourists, and something will happen. There. But we have to continue to travel and to move around. But always, of course, taking into account uh, those uh, constraints uh, uh, and perhaps adapting our behaviour to them. And and for uh, a number of years now, I, I know that the ECOWAS has been an organisation that we would be very keen to work with. There are things that we can do together. And I would go back to what you said that yourself. Uh, you will be able to help us uh, perhaps uh, to uh, to disseminate this, this message uh, with greater outreach uh, for us but you you have said that yourself that this is about perhaps taking ownership of this first tool that we have put together by all the practitioners all the professionals and uh, with, with regard to uh, UN WTO uh, and the the regional uh, department, uh, we are stand ready to hear from you um, your proposals uh, to get uh, closer to you uh, in the field there to be able to propose some specific solutions to you or proposals. There are solutions uh, to crises, the crisis we're facing today. We've been working on them. We could, we could. We have this, this this crisis unit. We can help you to train the practitioners. We can help you to uh, to work with the the different uh, um, factors uh, that you have to deal with when when a disaster happens. A disaster will always happen sometime, and we will always have crisis. So I think I think we can't uh, sit back just uh, thinking that things like that won't happen. They will happen, and we have to stand ready. You have to get prepared. You have to share experiences. That you have to rally people and with their input for you. It, we, it's not about uh, eradicating completely, limiting uh, the threats, but it's be able to. It's about thinking about the consequences of, of those dreadful events and the terrible events and how they will affect us and to deal with them. Thank you so much for your input. Yes, uh, 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 yes, please go ahead. Très bien, je, je, je vous remercie. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say something else in two points. The first one is that when we adopt this approach to really analyze security issues, we realize that even for us, it's an opportunity for us to reposition ourselves and to develop our tourism differently. I'm talking in terms of the tourism offer now, and also the structure of services that go with it, which has to change. And to do that, I can tell you that it's a, it's a titanic effort that is required. Uh, we're slight, somewhat overwhelmed by this. We don't really know where to start because we're being attacked from both sides. We have an attack. We're being attacked by the pandemic and we also have security attacks, but we know that we have to make tourism survive. So we need to absolutely reinvent tourism. And it maybe gives us a chance to completely have an overhaul here and think about a completely different approach to tourism. And my second point was to make a suggestion. I think that during 2022, we should organize a meeting between the eco between ECOWAS and the UNWTO. And we could talk with Madame Grandcourt, the regional director for Africa, and we could discuss um, an agenda. But I would like this to be done in the first quarter of 2022 so that we can really get started on this as quickly as possible. So this would be a joint meeting between ECOWAS and um, the UNWTO and see how we really could 
identify activities that, that are possible from the white paper. So not just crisis management, but also looking at actions identified in the Eco Words Action Plan for Tourism, which is our Eco Tour um, during these, um, 2019, which is has been guiding tourism in Eco Words countries since it was adopted in 2018. And so maybe after this meeting, we could talk uh, bilaterally and try and find a date. Excellent. Thank you very much, Madame Drabo. I think that you are right that in the first quarter of 2022 is going to be a busy period and we need to get organized. Um, there's plenty of things to discuss. And we're very interested in your proposal. I think that Elsia will be in touch with you very quickly about it. Thank you once again. Madam, I think Mr. Dayak from Niger would also like to take the floor. Maybe we could hear your experience, Mr. Nayak from Niger. Yes, hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you very well. Well, first of all, thank you for this very enriching encounter. I apologize. I was called by my management, so I was not able to listen to all of the discussions. But I wanted to congratulate and commend this initiative. It's very welcome in the current situation in the Sahel and West Africa. We're very sensitive. We're very well aware of these issues. And I just wanted to comment. Um, but I'm looking forward to receiving these documents in order to look at them in detail. But I just wanted to comment on some of the things that I've heard, notably raised by Madame Rabot. And I would like to ask her if we could organize this meeting in Niamey with the UNWTO and ECOWAS. We would be delighted to host this event. And as you know, we are severely affected by the security problems. And I just wanted to say what is important, particularly at the UNWTO, which is a global institution. Maybe there needs to be some lobbying with ECOWAS so that we stop seeing this uh, security issue as a major problem, but as an opportunity. This is a form of insurrection that we are reading, uh, we are experiencing. And if we look at the context, these it's affecting zones that were extremely touristic. But in the last 15 years, it's been impossible for tourists to access these areas. And so why do I think we need to do some lobbying? I think because tourism is maybe the sector that can pay, that can contribute the most to calm the situation because it's the people in the regions who are affected by the terrorism and income from tourism goes directly to these regions. And this could help to stabilize these areas. So that's what I wanted to say. I, I'm not, whether it's the UNWTO or the regional bodies, I think there is a message to broadcast. As Stella said earlier, we must not overlook our region when we're finding solutions to attenuate the security situation and help to stabilize these regions that have been somewhat abandoned and which are experiencing a crisis. So I really think we need to lobby so that tourism is taken into account because we think that tourism can have a huge impact in stabilizing the region. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dayaka. I think we share the same vision with Madame Rabo. Obviously, there's a limit to the exercise, and that is to find the balance between professionalizing the people working in tourism and uh, the ability to ensure that these activities take place in 
total security and finding that balance is part of our work. It's almost a scientific approach that needs to be taken, a very professional approach, which will allow us to find this balance. So thank you very much for what you've just said. Thank you for inviting us to Niamey to present the um, white paper and the work done by the UNWTO. Are there any other questions? Do we have time to take any more questions? Then I think it's over to Elsia to close our meeting. Thank you, Didier. And please allow me to thank the last two speakers, Madame Drapeau and Mr. Dayak. As UNWTO, we will follow up on your comments because it's very important for us to continue this work. If you allow me now, I will continue in English, but uh, I just wanted to, to say with the launch of this uh, white paper, I think uh, we've already opened the door, opened the floor in uh, into the work that uh, you yourself, the member states, you have tasked us with uh, since the, the, the strategic uh, proposal of this uh, agenda that was launched uh, now uh, already two years uh, in the process. We, we have uh, reduced a little bit uh, the activities that we have been doing because of the current situation we are in. But as Didier mentioned, we have been able throughout at least last year to have conducted a, a series of uh, different workshops virtually, which uh, the member states partic participated very actively. And this has also encouraged us to continue to look at ways to try to bring this to you uh, in the coming year uh, in presential. And uh, again, here, I open um, uh, the, the floor to, to welcome any countries, any organization who's uh, willing to further strengthen this work with us that we've started with the UMOA and uh, NEPAD. Um, uh, we, we heard uh, Madame Dragbo and, and Niger, of course, we will work along these lines. But um, we can uh, look at other destinations as well. We can take a regional approach as well. So um, we are really open and we really want to bring as much as possible uh, more and different stakeholders to help us to, to really continue uh, with this work that we've started with DJ and his team. Um, and uh, for me, what I want to finish on is uh, to really encourage you all to help us to promote uh, this white paper widely. We have shared the links uh, with you already. We will uh, be uh, uh, following up also with our members very closely. Um, and of course, for us, this is very important because we did not only involve the Africa region, but we spanned it across the world because there are a lot of uh, um, experiences that can be shared and we've witnessed this this morning. We wish that it could have been longer to be able to take more comments uh, from the participants. But uh, what we emphasize on is to be able to be together in presential next year and start the, the series of workshops and trainings that will empower more um, our stakeholders in the tourism sector. I believe uh, uh, just before we end, uh, we have Madame Futabong, who has also worked very closely with us behind the scenes from uh, Auda Nepad, uh, that I would like to invite her maybe to say a few words as well before we close the session. But as I mentioned earlier, this is only the beginning of uh, the, the work ahead of us. And uh, allow me just before giving the floor to Madame Futabong to thank, uh, first of all, all the colleagues inside UNWTO. Um, if I start mentioning names, uh, but uh, primarily we had Juliana, who was uh, very instrumental in working with us uh, to really get the final piece here. We have our colleagues, uh, Michelle, uh, Dirk, uh, and of course my team from the Africa department, uh, Mr. Mayaki here, uh, my deputy, uh, Ms. Remal Zineb, 
who's our program officer, and uh, Mr. Simon, who's also been uh, very instrumental in putting together this piece of work to reach you. And of course, the rest of the team that has uh, been uh, working silently to support us. Thank you so much. And thank you to our experts and all the other departments that have supported us. So Madame Fodabong, I pass the floor to you. <laughs> thank you very much. Let's see, sorry. Thank you so much, um, Asa, for this. And um, I, I, I just want to say all protocol observe, um, since I'm not sure who, um, those who are still in, in the audience, but particularly um, just want to recognize the, the leadership of um, WMO the, that's participating in the meeting, as well as all the other colleagues from um, on the UNWTO, um, Madam Kelsko, your, your team um, that you mentioned, um, but very particularly to um, recognize all the member states who are present in this very important launch of the white paper. Um, I am not going to, I think, to say much because um, my boss, Dr. Mayaki, the CEO of UDA NEPAD, um, actually said said it all in terms of the importance of this paper, of this white paper, um, in light of the important role and strategic contribution that tourism um, brings to um, the GDP of uh, most African countries. Um, I would just like to reiterate the point that he made on partnerships, um, because the realization of this very important document has cast come as a result of a strong and strategic partnership between um, our three um, um, institutions. And uh, I, I think in the world that we have today, um, there's not much that we can do um, as we prepare and we recover um, on, from COVID. Um, there's not much that we can do if we don't work in, in partnership um, to support and um, in, and collaborate, bringing the strengths of different organizations to develop uh, tools and, and more importantly, implement the tools that we have we 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 have worked um, we have just produced um, to support um, member states in their tourism um, sector. Um, I will just also. Um, want to um, mention um, some of the, the, the excellent points that have come out from today's um, discussion hearing from all these um, member states, not only from the African continent, but from other continents as well, that there's a rich knowledge out there of experience and lessons. Uh, and, and this white paper has helped us to document some of this. Um, and so we're looking forward really to continue this collaboration with U uh, UMO, and in, but in particular with UNWTO, a partnership that we have had um, for uh, many years now, and that has been very instrumental in the, the work that um, both WTO and um, AUD and NEPAD does in support of member states. So we look forward to continuing this collaboration and to work with um, UNWTO to um, see what are the concrete actions that we can do together to bring to light the, the, we now have a document, we have a white paper that is fair and good and we are launching it today. But what will be even better will be the implementation of the tools that are contained in this white paper. And so in 2022, by God's grace, we are looking forward to working with all the partners, so the member states, um, the private sector, the UNWTO, to see how we can roll out these tools and support member states to domesticate these tools and use them to, re, to, 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 to strengthen um, and, and reform the tourism sector, I think it's Madame Drabo that used the word reinvent the tourism sector, um, because we need to do that from the experiences that we have all gone through um, the last 18 months or so of COVID-19. 
it has shown us that um, crises happen and they will continue to happen. And now we have COVID, we have climate change, it might be something else in future. So we have to be prepared. We don't have to wait until when um, there is a crisis before we respond. But these tools that and approaches that have are contained in this white paper will help our member states um, be more prepared for any eventualities. I would want to end as Dr. Mayaki said, yes, we have a crisis, but this paper um, was already been discussed before the COVID crisis. The COVID crisis only exacerbated the need to have such a, a document. But now we have this document, we look beyond the crisis and look at the opportunities that are there for this con uh, uh, sector to continue to be a viable one to help create job and employment opportunities um, for uh, the African people and globally. So we thank you all and we really thank WHO and, and UMR for this excellent partnership. We look forward to working with the member states to implement it. And I would just like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous 2022 to all of us. Thank you. Back to you, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Futabon. I see that Dr. Mayaki also joined us again. Um, Dr. Mayaki, would you like to add something else? We were more or less at the end uh, of the session. Uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, I think I still in the door in terms of uh, okay. pushing towards implementation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think, yeah, the, the, the key word also mentioned here is partnerships, and this is what it, this is all about. And uh, definitely the next steps is now, uh, as we have uh, indicated, is to bring this uh, in a presential format to the ground uh, uh, and have a, um, a bigger uh, discussion, meeting, training also with the different stakeholders. And as, my, as a Madam Dagbo uh, really pointed out, there's a real need for us now to relook, especially at how we position ourselves uh, going forward after this pandemic. And this is a, this is a, a, a document that will keep evolving as uh, Didier keeps reminding us because the crisis is, as we all know, Today we're having uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID, tomorrow it will be something else, but at least the most important is to be prepared and how best to address it. So we will conclude here for today. We thank all of you who's taken time to connect and share your thoughts with us. It has been really enriching. We have some very key points. I see some messages coming in also from Comesa. Um, we will definitely be in touch with all of you to share widely this white paper and the next steps as well. And don't hesitate to also feel free to write to us uh, and also visit our website so that we can uh, answer any other concerns that you may have. Um, I think the team indicated to me that we wanted to have a group photo. So if we all put our cameras on, we can have a, a nice picture of this group who attended this session today. Um, and uh, we will uh, take this opportunity to wish you all a, a very uh, nice end of your festive season as well. So, Simon, we are ready. So, yes, hello, everybody. Three, two, one, go. Excellent, thank you very much. So we're gonna do two more. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, one moment. So three, two, one, go. And one more, please. <laughs> Okay. Great. Two seconds. So three, two, one. Let's go. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much again. And till next time. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye. Très bien.